Mesdames et Messieurs, Ladies and Gentlemen, just a great welcome to our friend, our guest, Randy Enken. Vice President Robert, uh, friends and guests near and far, bonjour, Yorna, good morning. My uh, talk will be a little bit non-traditional, but I'm a, a non-traditional person. And um, what we'll see here, uh, we have a few technical glitches with the translation, but hopefully the, uh, everybody can understand me. I'll try to speak slowly for you. It's, it's hard to believe that we're, we're here. It's been a long path for the journey of seasteading. But in many ways, we're really just at the beginning. And, and, and why we're here at this gathering is I see this as a relationship. It's a relationship between the seasteaders and the Polynesians that in many ways started as an online date. Mark Collins reached out to us, sent us some emails, told us why French Polynesia would be a perfect place for our floating island project. And after we exchanged some emails and had some video chats, uh, President Fritch invited us to make a proposal. We brought a proposal here last September, and by January, we'd already put a ring on each other's finger. So I thought, we better get together and meet the families. So this is a chance. We brought nearly 100 international guests here to showcase who the seasteaders are. And it's a chance for you to meet the seasteaders and for the seasteaders to meet the Polynesians. I'm really humbled that so many Tahitians are here in the room today and participating in our project. How's that? Better? Um, and last week we went out and met with many local institutions. Uh, we met with our co-sponsors. In particular, I'd like to thank Air Tahiti Nui. We talked on the radio. We talked with, uh, on Radio 1 with Alahan. And uh, we took a, a trip to the heart of Tahiti, up into the Valley of Papua New, and learned about the local Tahitian culture. And, uh, and we got to participate in a local Tahitian ceremony that was really meaningful for us, where we left behind rocks we had brought from home uh, as a token of saying we would like to be welcome to this island. And next week, we're going to do a town hall that's just question and answers for locals, because I'm, I know they have uh, many questions. Oh, my, my, uh, my hands have moved so fast, they've already got my whole talk going in front of me. So we have a little issue with the uh, thing. So you're, you're one slide ahead of me there, Pauline. <laughs> um, yeah, there we are. I, I'm going to have to do something a little bit different for that. And, and Pascal, I'm going to take 20 minutes. So. Um, I thought in the guise of a relationship, I should, I should introduce myself so I can get you to know who I am, um, and then I'll introduce who the sea centers are, and I'll tell you why we're here in Tahiti. So I've been the executive director. I've been the executive director. I've been the executive director <laughs> since 2012. Um, and before that, I was an activist, and I was really interested in trying to make the world a more compassionate and just place. So one of the things I did is I co-owned and operated a treatment center for people who are addicted to drugs. I worked for a nonprofit that was interested in novel therapies for people with post-traumatic stress disorder. And I still, to this day, uh, am an activist trying to volunteer my time to uh, choose compassionate and just policies over mass incarceration. Uh, and this picture here is of me in grad school when uh, I was leading a campaign asking for a good Samaritan policy on our campus. But I also really uh, like to have a good time. And I like being outdoors. And in my younger years, I was a snowboarder. And uh, that's how I spent my winters. And in my summers, I was a whitewater raft guide. And uh, most recently, I learned to become a scuba diver in anticipation of uh, my future life living on a floating island. And uh, I think I'm going to do some scuba diving this afternoon, and I'm really looking forward to going out to Fakaraba next week, and, uh, and scuba where I hear is one of the best dive sites in, in the world. So I'm also really blessed I brought with me, uh, I get to share my life with my fiance Onyx. And I hope many of you will get a chance to meet her uh, over the course of the week. And I want to 
share some, a part of my life that's been a big influence on me, and I think it will be a big influence on the culture of the Floating Island Project. And that's my annual pilgrimage to Black Rock City. So Black Rock City is a desert in Nevada. It's a, it's a town. It's a temporary autonomous zone that comes together for one week with 70,000 people. Imagine 70,000 people coming together for one week with very little central authority, self-organizing in small groups, and sharing a, a, a common ethos. And amongst that ethos is leave no trace. When we pack up and leave that desert, we leave nothing behind. Not a trash bag, not a cigarette butt, nothing but wheel tracks and footprints. So you've already been told that Black Rock City is, is Burning Man. And, uh, and this August will be my, four, my 14th trip to Burning Man. It's a place where I go and I camp with dozens of my closest friends. And it's a lot of hard work, a lot of planning to get out there, and a lot of hard work to set up our camp. But it's rewarded with uh, days filled of seeing spectacular art, uh, dancing, laughing, crying, and intimate times with my, my loved ones. And this is uh, the art car that my team and I built last year. Uh, we took out the seats and we put in four, uh, four queen-size beds. And we all snuggle in that thing and cruise the city together. But, and at the end of the week, it culminates in the, in the burning of the man. But, but Burning Man is, is more than a party. It's a place for deep connections and rich experiences. Uh, every year, they construct a temple that is the spiritual heart of the city, where people honor loved ones who have died. This is the Temple of Grace from 2014. This is the Temple of Transition from 2011. And this is last year's temple burning at the end of the week. We, we end our week coming together and, and in a symbolic gesture of understanding that life is, is temporary, to honor our loved ones that we've lost, and also to recognize that we will build again. So Burning Man is guided by 10 principles. And a couple of these may be hard to enact in the daily life, but many of them are influential about what we'd like to do here in our Floating Island Project. In particular, we'd like to carry forward the ethics of Burning Man are inclusive, self-reliant, community-oriented, civically responsible, and environmentally sustainable. It was at Burning Man where our founder, Patry Friedman, was wandering around when he came up with the idea for seasteading. Patry, the grandson of Nobel Prize economist Milton Friedman, mesmerized by the dynamism of a city that changed each year where everybody's homes are tents or in a mobile home, and people could more easily choose which, uh, who they associated with, imagine that on a city, or on the sea, if all of our homes floated and we could sail between locations, we could more easily choose our associations and societies, more easily than we can do with landlocked homes. So you'll see our logo is inspired, this is the logo of Burning Man, and then this is the logo of Seasteading, which is a, a man holding up a seastead which in turn has inspired the logo for this conference, um, which is a man and a woman holding up a floating island. And, and just coincidentally, it resembles the French Polynesian flag of five figures on a Vaha. And it was, uh, when I was invited to join the Seaside Institute, one of the things I got really infatuated with was the opportunity, uh, instead of fighting from within, we could lead by example from new lands at sea. And uh, one more slide there. So, who are the seasteaders? Uh, contrary to what most people say, we're not all from Silicon Valley. Um, in fact, of the 100 people registered for this gathering, only 10 of us are from the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, since 2003, we've been collecting a survey of people that want to live on the first floating islands, and we found that 45% of them are from outside of the United States. We have attendees in this room from across the United States, out to Hawaii, the Cook Islands, New Zealand, Australia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, Germany, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Colombia, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a few. 
But over the next few days, we're going to showcase who we are. And we are a group of maritime experts, policy makers, architects, entrepreneurs, investors, sailors, environmentalists, engineers, scientists, explorers, legal scholars, economists, technologists, artists, traditional wayfinders, and Polynesian cultural experts. We are an international group of people who are passionate. We're passionate about peace. We're passionate about liberty. We're passionate about technology. We're passionate about the environment. And we're passionate about trying something new on the blue frontier. And we think that we've found kindred spirits here amongst the Polynesian people. Time and time again, we've been told that the Polynesians are the original seasteaders. We're just confident that we have a lot that we can learn from you, and a lot we can learn from each other. So before we came to French Polynesia, we investigated many locations. Uh, and we had inadvertently overlooked French Polynesia due to the complex relationship with France. But we knew that our host nation needed to meet some basic criteria. We wanted to be out of the path of hurricanes. We needed to have access to protected waters in bays, harbors, or atolls where we could design floating islands for uh, moderate wave conditions rather than the open seas. We wanted to have access to a modern market where we could acquire goods. We needed access to high-speed internet. And we needed a nimble and stable government that we could work with. And this brings me to something that I want to make very clear. There is some misunderstandings and assumptions being made about our project. This is a project we are going to fund ourselves, as the Vice President said. We are not here to take the financial support of the government. We are not here to take local money through defiscalization schemes, either locally or in, in France. And our obligation to French Polynesia, under the agreement we signed in January, states that we will conduct an environmental assessment to ensure that we do not hurt the environment, that we will do an economic impact study to uh, find out whether we can be a positive economic benefit to the local economy, and that we will conduct legal research to uh, provide guidance to the government on how to legally create a special economic sea zone uh, with its own uh, special governing framework. And this week, we've brought along our economic impact study and our environmental analysis. And we're going to present those to the government tomorrow. And we'll present them in the speaker series on Thursday. Through our research and discussions, we've learned that because of French Polynesia's relationship to France and their, uh, the high degree of autonomy that French Polynesia has, that in fact, you are uniquely suited to collaborate with us on creating a semi-autonomous zone for the floating island project. So why French Polynesia? Or as Vice President Rohrfrech says, why not French Polynesia? Well, this is what it looks like in, we gotta go a little, yep, that, that's San Francisco. Uh, nine months out of the year, rainy and, and dreary. Uh, and I jest only some. And, and while San Francisco and Silicon Valley are meccas of opportunity, they just simply aren't the place that provides the opportunity that Polynesia provides to the seasteaders. So the Seasteading Institute uh, has been a nonprofit think tank since 2009, and we've been supported by thousands of, uh, of donors and hundreds of volunteers. But in order to uh, actualize the floating islands that will cost tens of millions of dollars to build, we spun off a new company called Blue Frontiers, of which I am the CEO. And, and with me, I have our entire team uh, this week. Many of them are going to speak over the next few days. And I hope you get a chance to, to meet them all. And you'll also get a chance within a, in the room, we have several of our initial investors and partners and volunteers. So I'd like to conclude with a vision as to where this project is going. By the end of the year, if all goes according to plan, the French Polynesian Assembly will pass a legislative package uh, creating a pathway for the first sea zone. And with that package will be an initial land zone where our team can be in early 2018 along with our first members of our community and the local research institutions that we're partnering with. We will first develop a few pilot islands. And you may have noticed in my talk that I haven't so shown a picture yet of what one of our floating islands will look like. And that's because we haven't 
actually decided what it's going to look like yet. But I'm sure that our architects and designers will tease you as the week goes on about what they may look like or could look like. Um, but it's our commitment to the people of Polynesia that our floating islands are elegant, that they complement their surroundings. We want to live in something that's beautiful. We want you to see something that's beautiful. And that's both the same for the environment. It's our commitment that we're going to take care of the environment around us. We do not want to pollute our own backyards. And when our pilot project is proven successful, it'll grow, you know, when it's proven successfully economically and environmentally, it'll grow organically and we'll add additional islands and as the market demands those islands. And then we will look to move our islands elsewhere as well. We aim to develop a brand new industry that will export floating islands around the South Pacific to the Tuamotus and to neighbors who are losing their islands to rising sea levels and to coastal nations that use environmentally poor practices of land reclamation and floating will be better. And our floating islands will be in this brand new industry. They'll bring new companies and it'll bring new opportunities and new wealth and it'll be a spot for Polynesians who have left to come back and participate in this new project. And over the next few days, you're going to hear from many of the speakers who are going to help create those new opportunities. So I can't promise what the actual outcome will be. I know there are skeptics out there, probably skeptics here in this room. Even I have a healthy dose of skepticism. This is a really big undertaking. But I also know that our team is dedicated and passionate, and we work pragmatically every single day to move this project forward. If we're successful, this will be a win-win for the seasteaders and the Polynesians. We're excited to be your neighbors. We're hopeful that we can develop a fruitful, long-lasting relationship together. We're hopeful that our separate families can become one big, diverse family of seasteaders and Polynesians. Thank you, merci, Moraro. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, big applause to our friend Randy Enkin. Thank you, Randy.